गुड मॉर्निंग सस्याकाल आदाब अगेन दिस इज माई सिक्सटी हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फोर्थ वीडियो एंड दिस विल अगेन कंटिन्यू विद द रिजम्शन प्रॉपर्टी अ बंगलो नंबर नाइनटीन कचहरी रोड अमृतसर दिवानचंद पिशौरिया वर्सेज सो एंड सो क्वाइट अ फेमस केस ऑफ सर्वे नंबर ट्वेंटी वन यू नो what was really happening in this case it was a very peculiar case you know the hor actually came up came up with the idea and actually achieved that this notice is ultra vires and even the rent because this bungalow was on hire had to be paid so a suit for permanent injunction was filed and finally things moved on <clears throat> now there was a case filed 471 way back in 1963 and even the decision came in 1963 itself divanchan who was then the original hor claimed that after the annexation of maharaja ranjit singh in 1849 any grant which must have been given had to be given after that because till then this part of the punjab was never a part of the british terrain this is very important which he pleaded so what are we going to do mentions another bungalow similar which they were owning that is bungalow number 13 owned by amin chand of amritsar they both saw that the grant was or of a permanent nature and were incapable of being revoked so they pleaded that grant is not something which you can revoke so in 1962 the grant amounting to 0.8 acre was resumed as bungalow number 19 and part of it 0.63 acres was resumed as bungalow number 13 of mr amin chan plan a exhibit pw1 has been moved so these were two separate uh, properties bungalow number 13 and bungalow number 19 and the lower court suit was decided in bungalow number 13 in favor of amin chand in 1963 issues which were made were whether the defendants were entitled to resumed the disputed property in terms of grant which is being held by plaintiff without payment of and compensation whether plaintiff served valid notice under section 80 cpc that's all now this property was inherited so finally there was another owner who was one of the legal heir that is shrimati padma devi she filed a writ in the high court number so and so in 1964 similarly amin chand also filed a writ number 44 in 1964 both these appeals were disposed jointly and the trial court was remanded back with this these cases till the suit talks of three separate owners one is now mrs padmavati mr k c manchanda and mr sujit singh this case was dealt and the divanchand and amin chand case was dealt separately so now we have to understand these are three separate properties which are functioning now notices are being impleted that the notice issued was of the grant when the entire land was a suzerainty of the sikh kingdom b the grant was of permanent nature and the building had been erected upon the same the way understood please understand the government is in no position to resume the grant in whatsoever manner without resorting to legal proceedings plaintiff and its predecessors have been enjoying the grant and cannot be dispossessed so these are the basic pleadings which the entire case of this revolves the honorable court has rewritten the whole gjo now we are not going to get into that 179 18 that nowhere in the same gjo the honorable court is saying that amritsar was a military station and the gjo grant must have been given there you understand what i am trying to say no way the same regulation or the ggo speaks of promulgation for punjab so the plaintiff suit that he is an old grant 
बट ही इज टू मिजरेबली टू प्रूव वेदर ही इज एन ओल्ड ग्रांड ना हियर वे द होल स्टोरी कम्स ही क्लेम्ड टू बी एन ओल्ड ग्रांड बट ही कुड नॉट प्रूव वेदर ही इज एन ओल्ड ग्रांड एप्लीकेबिलिटी ऑफ जीजो ही प्रूव्ड दीज थ्री थिंग्स वर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेदर पंजाब आफ्टर दी इनक्सेशन ऑफ महाराजा रंजीत सिंह एवरीथिंग वॉज ट्राइंग टू प्रूव इन दी एबसेंस ऑफ द प्रूफ ऑफ एनी ग्रांड द लॉ स्टेट इट मस्ट बी अ लाइसेंस कपल्ड विद अ परमानेंट स्ट्रक्चर एंड अ सेल अंडर टीपीए एक्ट एप्लीकेबिलिटी सो द जज लीव दिस पॉइंट it is not important whether it is a grant under either of the ggos which has been mentioned 179 the main issue of dismissal was not given an opportunity to be heard before issuing resumption notice so cannot be dispossessed judgment coded air 1964 you know <clears throat> uh, supreme court then another judgment air 1961 uh, supreme court uh, 1570 uh, was quoted where the inheritors this was something related to dharmshala uh, a, a, a religious property how does an uh, executive order work here the judge speaks that the lower court the grant was not proved and no one led evidence and it is pointless to lay stress on this very point of grant neither the plaintiff neither the defendant could put prove the grant so the other question was the validity of resumption another judgment 1873 punjab records 01 was quoted of raval pindi where it was held that raval pindi was never annexed in 1836 to the bengal army and later promulgation same thing so we have another judgment of air 1936 peshawar 217 so this judgment talks of the applicability of the gju and it has a full list of people in rawalpindi uh, of the revenue settlement officer this judgment is an amazing judgment and it actually is the backbone of this case so the main issue whether resumption notice was an executive order and can defendant take possession is to be seen it was ruled against the department a high court rsa was filed an appeal 1350 of 1968 decided in 1980 the suit was contested by union of india who pleaded that the site dispute so and so recovery under secretary grant gg all those points what the court said an appeal in the finding trial court was reserved by uh, reversed by the learned senior subordinate by judgment of 29th february 19 but the degree of injunction was maintained on ground that the government had no right to enter the possession under the executive order so the ggo by the session court was held up one part was said okay resumption can take place but this being an executive order they cannot take possession in that so union of india came in an appeal in the present case admits the government right resumes admission deed all these things are coming up so what is happening whether the possession whether the grant whether the notice resumption is to be held up so union of india's rsa was finally dismissed they filed an slp in 1980 the high court order was upheld in the slp also so the resumption notice is quashed and we people are sitting on i don't know what all we need to really dig into the right things at the right time but you know we laugh it out rani ji you couldn't save your bungalow how dare you you know dream and think of or you become a consultant towards us it's shameful at times you know when people object to and question me when my truth has been spoken by me in a right way so what is happening to this bungalow today 19 and 13 what is the status you know amrit sir i know there was a bungalow owner uh, well he was very close and 
happened to even you know stay with him once he said my grandfather amin chand had got his property freeholded this is that case and this is that high court order he refused to share it with me i kept asking him till 2012 he kept telling me some this some that mukul rodgi this one that one is known to me my today that same property in family disputes is facing a problem and it's all set to get a resumption notice but what do you do with these guys these guys are flabbantly arrogant people you know they themselves don't want to share anything but they expect that roni ji must share everything guys wake up amritsar people i have a beautiful order of amritsar where the dc is written something that's freehold so please get in wake up again and again i am saying we are not government properties under gjo 179 we are strictly old grant never ever converted into new grants so what do we have to do just find get your records and come to me i will prove that you are an old grant not a grant under gjo 179 and you are a revenue free grant willing let me know watch my youtube's thank you good day